how low and um at least here from the sunny west coast good morning um welcome to this uh webinar uh, called order management um i'm your host today my name is sonne manders uh, i'm the chief operating officer uh, of flexport before we go into this webinar i want to do a, a couple of housekeeping items um, and explain you the screen um before we introduce our guests and go into the content what you see in front of you is a screen with quite a few widgets um, on the left side you see the speakers and on the top you see me and i will introduce my uh, guests in a second below that uh widget you see uh, a widget for additional materials there you can download the presentation um, and um, and uh, a couple of other things. Then in the middle, um, you actually see the slides uh, and just below there, you should see me speaking right now. Um, then on the right side, you see a Q&A box uh, and you see a feedback box. Um, please share your feedback if you have any ideas for future webinars um, and uh, please uh, ask as many questions as you want. We have a couple of experts on the, um, uh, in our uh, application here that will be answering your questions uh, real time and we will be selectively uh, picking a couple of the uh, questions to uh, discuss plenary. But before, before we go there, Um, a small legal notice, um, because everything that we say here um, is, of course, uh, based on the uh, on, on, on the current situation and might not be applicable to your specific situation. All righty, let me go to the more exciting part of this, uh, and that is introducing our guests. Um, so first of all, you see me on the left side. So my name is Son Monders. I'm the COO. I've been here for a very long time. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, uh, don't hesitate. Um, then um, one to the to the right, we have Drew Quinn. Uh, Drew is a senior. He leads our product development for trade and financial services, which includes order management. Um, he is passionate about great customer experiences um, and has led the charge uh, on developing uh, this product together with a lot of our clients. Um, prior to uh, Flexport, um, Drew spent quite a bit of time at um, Uber uh, doing kind of like the same thing, um, working uh, uh, and building financial products for riders and drivers. Then all the way to the right, uh, we have Julie. Julie has been with Flexport for a very long time, uh, 2015, if I recall, and she's currently our VP of Global Key Accounts. So she leads the charge on uh, all of our largest uh, uh, global accounts. Um, before um, uh, Flexport, Julie spent a, a lot of time around the world, um, and uh, including eight years living in China, uh, where she worked for a large uh, packaging uh, company. Um, Julie and I share one more thing is that we both are graduates from Columbia Business School, um, which is another interesting fact here. All right, let's uh, go to the agenda for today. Um, here we go. For the agenda, um, we first go into the landscape. Um, then we talk about what is Flexport order management. Uh, you'll get a Flexport uh, order management demo. This is a little bit different than what we normally do. Normally we talk about the industry. Uh, today we really want to show the product that we have and how it's different. Uh, and then some tips and uh, for bit better visibility and collaboration. And last but not least, of course, uh, we will uh, answer uh, your questions. I'm handing it over uh, to Julie right now. Welcome, Julie. Thank you. Great to be here with both of you this morning. I'm very excited about order management. Uh, but before we get into the meat and potatoes, I think it's worth taking a step back and for framing the, the, the supply chain environment that we've all barely lived through in the last 12 months or so. Um, so this, this graph is showing U.S. imports uh, compared to exports. You can see that the spread has not been bigger really any time in the last decade. So, uh, you know, as we've all sat around and had to cancel all-inclusive trips to Cancun or, or wherever, and, and we've sort of filled that empty hole in our hearts with new toaster ovens and cashmere tracksuits. You know, that's obviously led to just a huge surge in, in imports. So just in Q4, up 25% year over year, exports are down. And, and what that means is, is really a compounding problem. And so 
Uh, if we look at rate levels, this is ocean freight containers. The green line shows, um, it's, it's, let's see, Shanghai to LA. You can see 2020 was, was really the highest it's been in a decade. Again, kind of a continual theme. Um, and then that red line is, is Shanghai to Rotterdam. So uh, almost $10,000 a container to get your goods from, from China into to Europe. So, um, you know, that's really, again, the uh, result of so much demand and meanwhile, ocean carriers being more disciplined than ever. Um, so what that, that led to was equipment imbalances around the world. And, um, you know, I think some of you might be sitting on here and saying, hey, you know, I joined to learn about order management. What does this have to do with any of it? But if you've been managing, you know, supply chain in, in the last couple of months um, and you found out, for example, that there was going to be an equipment shortage in Ningbo and it would take a few weeks to, to have enough containers for your suppliers to be able to move the goods out of their factory, well, it, the, the problem is is really only starting there, right? You you need to then answer the question. Okay, well, so what? What does this mean for for our supply chain? Um, who are the the suppliers impacted? Who are the uh, purchasing managers that are impacted? What skews? And ultimately, what you care about is what does this mean for our clients that are clamoring to get these goods that might have placed orders and they're waiting on a back ordered item. So, so it is all connected. Um, and you know, what I, what I think that really means is there's never been a more important time, a more critical time to have visibility across the supply chain. Um, and I know that visibility is a, a word used really loosely in this, this industry. It means something different to every single individual, depending on what your role is in the supply chain. And so if we think about the order to cash cycle end to end, this is a snapshot of, sort of how it all begins, right? And it begins with the customer and it begins with our purchase, purchasing, merchandising teams, you know, even design and marketing teams trying to understand what is the demand for each product going to look like? And then they, they take that demand and translate it into a purchase order. And that purchase order then is sent to your suppliers wherever they might be around the world and really tells them, okay, I need you to get these raw materials to make this quantity of this product because we ultimately believe that that's what our clients want. But that is just the kind of trigger, right? So um, it's really important because everything downstream that happens from when that, that booking is made for the shipment, when that shipment then leaves the factory, the milestones on that shipment, you know, everything in that, that sort of line can be impacted if you get the first piece or any other piece wrong. And so what we've heard, at least what I've heard over the last five plus years from our clients at Flexport is that they want an end-to-end -end solution to, to really have visibility into when that order is placed all the way through predictability in when they're going to receive those goods and pay for them. So that's really how this whole project started. I am really happy to be here with, with Drew today, who's led the charge over the last 12 months. Um, and it started with those client conversations, those clients telling us, hey, you know what? It's really wonderful that you can tell me, you know, exactly what's happening with this shipment, give me accurate milestones, but I still am left trying to piece together some, some other parts of this puzzle. And so we, we began client research actually more than a year ago. And I want to give a shout out. I know that there are some clients on this call that participated in our pilot program. Thank you so much. Cause you know, without, without the insights and views of our clients, you know, we, we wouldn't have a product here today. And there are two main themes that, that came across as we were conducting this, this research and bringing clients into the pilot program. Um, and I think it's important also to note that, that we had clients of all different shapes and sizes across lots of different uh, verticals and industries, but you know, it could be anything from a client that has three SKUs that they're selling on Amazon up to some of the largest 
brands in the world that have tens of thousands of SKUs, uh, no matter the size or shape of the client, the two biggest concerns that came across were visibility and, and collaboration. Uh, and when we talk again, when we talk about visibility, you know, everyone has a, a different interpretation of that. But it's it's really being able to know what is the status of my order. Um, so, you know, if the purchasing team placed that order 90 days ago, what's happening with it? Where are we in terms of the production cycle? Is that are those goods ready to be shipped? Are they going to arrive in the DC on time? Kind of all, that entire that entire chain of events. Um, and clients really wanted to be able to make more data driven decisions because knowing what happens uh, in the cycle with a with a PO can ultimately lead to things downstream like like planning labor in your DC. So it's all very interconnected. Collaboration, I think, was the 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 one that sort of struck us the most, where there's the biggest unmet need in the market today. So, even brands that were spending millions of dollars on an ERP system that's very sophisticated, and they've sort of bought every single module under the sun to make sure that everyone in their organization is looking at one single source of truth. What we heard from them was, you know, you could see when there were changes to an order in the system, but the so what and the the any any sort of exceptions or underlying communication that might need to, to accompany those changes, that was all still living in email um, and having different methods of communication and maybe even we chat with some of your suppliers that leads to a, a sort of disjointed source of truth, even though you've spent millions of dollars trying to get that single source of truth. So this was a really big one for us and um, you know, something that, that pops up over and over again in our, our conversations with our clients. So I want to take you to a poll next. Uh, for those of you on here that are managing supply chains, I'd love to hear how you most commonly collaborate with your supply chain partners. So uh, you know, select all that apply. It might be all of these, uh, phone call, spreadsheets, email, good old fashioned email. Um, maybe you do have that connectivity through your ERP system. Uh, you could be using messaging for really urgent orders, or you know, if you're, you're unable to get updates in a timely manner, you might sort of uh, revert to WeChat or a supply chain management tool like InforNexus or, or Amber Road. So I'll give you all just a couple moments here to select all that apply. It's a long list. There are lots of different different options out there, aren't there? All right. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Wow. Gosh. Okay. So almost 100% of you all are still using email. Understandable. Nothing wrong with email. Uh, spreadsheets also a very, very common way to communicate on orders. Smaller percentage have made that large investment in an ERP system. It looks like potentially there, there are lots of emergencies that are managed through WeChat uh, or, or Skype, Google Hangouts. And I think the smallest percentage here is going to be that supply chain management tool, like InforNexus, which you know I, I also understand these are these are expensive to to implement and get all your suppliers on. So this is really helpful. Thank you all. Um, and, and just to kind of take it one step further and and highlight the collaboration piece, there's one more. And we don't normally do back to back polls, but you're all very lucky. Um, another another question on how many suppliers you work with on a monthly basis. And I think this is important because seeing that almost a hundred percent of you all are using email as the primary tool to communicate on orders. Um, if you multiply that across 35 suppliers or you know 300 suppliers, you're you're really getting into a very complex network of of collaboration. Um, so, and give you all another moment to 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 select how many suppliers. Um, you know, 50 up. If you've got more than 50 and, and you're using a 
a sort of a bundle of email and WeChat and phone calls, you know, like life gets very complicated, especially in the, the world that we've all, all lived through in the last 12 months or so. So I'll give you a couple more moments to select your number. All right, let's see. Okay, so about half of you all have one to 10. About uh, 10% have, let's see, more than 50. Wow. So you can just sort of imagine how this all compounds, right? Managing all of managing all of that in email. You know, I can just sort of see the 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 life of one of our transportation managers that's maybe listening in that's been trying to give updates to your purchasing team about, you know, maybe 50 to 100 different SKUs scattered across a few different suppliers across different origins. Um, you know, like life is been tough in the last year. And so without further ado, I know you're, you want to really, you want to get to the meat and potatoes. Um, I want to introduce Gr Drew, who's on here. It's really been his sort of life work over the last 12 months. He's been living and breathing order management. As I said, he's, you know, it's his team that has been interacting with our pilot clients um, to learn more and do their research to really bring this to life. So Drew, I'll hand it off to you to, to give the people what they want. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Julie. Hey, everyone. Pleasure to be here. Um, thanks for joining. And yeah, shout out again to those uh, those customers that were in the pilot that are here. And, and thanks again. So uh, we've been developing this order management product uh, for quite some time now with lots of different people uh, around the Flexport team. And as I mentioned, we've been running a pilot program as well for about eight months. And that's really helped us to validate some of the assumptions uh, about the problems that we wanted to solve and some of the solutions and helped us iterate. And all of that has culminated in the launch of this product, which is now live as of last week uh, to the public. And I get to kind of show you what that looks like and give you an inside peek on what was our approach to solving some of the problems that Julie outlined, specifically around PO and SKU level visibility and the need for better collaboration tools and that use, I think importantly, that use the order data and incorporate that. And so maybe just a quick overview and then I'll dive into the, uh, into the demo here. But when we think about order management at Flexport, we're, we are thinking about a tool that we've built that helps consignees and their suppliers to more effectively plan, validate, and collaborate on the purchase orders in order to optimize their supply chain during the pre-booking process, but also making sure that all of that carries forward into the stages after the booking. And I think, you know, it sounds very abstract. And so probably the best way to give you a view on how we tackled this problem is just to dive into, into a demo. And so if you'll just bear with me, uh, we'll get that going here. All right, looks like we are in business. Okay, so just to ground everyone, what you see here is the Flexport platform. This is the overview tab, which is our dashboard. And something I wanna highlight is with our approach to building this product, we wanted to take order management and integrate it throughout the existing platform, as opposed to creating you know, something very separate. We wanted to integrate it within the existing surfaces that our customers already use. Um, and so that's, you'll see some of that in, in, uh, in the features that I'll show off today. And as I go through these features, I really have grouped them into those two themes that Julie uh, talked about, which is this need for PO and SKU level visibility throughout the supply chain lifecycle and the need for better collaboration tools. And so starting with the first theme, PO and SKU visibility. Now, how did we tackle that need? Well, first of all, it's important to give uh, a central repository for all of these orders so that we can reduce the number of sources of truth. You know, we saw in that poll, lots of emails, lots of spreadsheet, lots of other modes and methods of communicating about the supply chain and about orders. And those are all necessary things. 
but they sometimes result in several di different sources of truth. And that's what we heard from some of the clients that we worked with when we researched and as we did our pilot of this product. And so what we've done here, and as I navigate here towards the orders tab, what we've done is just create one central repository that both consignees, suppliers, Flexport operators, other participants in the supply chain can see all the orders, their status, and all the details of those orders. And so just to give you a sense of what that looks like, again, here's the list of purchase orders. I'm going to open up this order, PO1120, and show it to you. And here you can see all the details of the order, both at the header level as well as the individual line item level. And you'll see different tabs here that I'll go through as well. But one to highlight here is the history tab, right? So orders change a lot. They can change for various different reasons. We want to collect all those changes in one place so that you don't have a supplier that has version 1.1 and you have version 1.2 and then you're not on the same page. So that was something that was important. So this is order visibility and kind of central uh, repository for orders, but the key piece is how do you connect this to the actual shipments? How do you connect this to the bookings, the next, the next stage, right? And for that, what happens is suppliers have access to this platform and before they make their booking uh, within Flexport, as they do today, there's one additional step, which is them coming to the orders and deciding which of the order line items they'd like to add to that shipment. Of course, there can be multiple orders, different line items from different orders, and all of that is supported here. So as a supplier, I would come in, I've selected these three line items, number two, three, and four, and then I would review and book. And then I would move on to the next stage, which is our, our more standard booking form. And I think the key thing here is we wanted to make it as easy for suppliers as possible. So yes, there is this additional step of selecting line items, but then we use this data from the order to pre-fill as much of that booking form as possible. So fill in the mode, fill in the destination, fill in all of these things so that while we are creating an additional step to provide additional visibility, we're then reducing steps downstream. So that's the mechanism for how orders get attached to bookings and then ultimately shipments. I wanna show you what that actually results in, what it looks like at the end of the day. Well, if I navigate on this, or again, I'm on this order 1120, I'm gonna navigate to the shipment tab. And you can see there's already a shipment that has been linked to this order. And the shipment's name is this Flex 277. And so if I open that up, now you can see that we are in the shipments tab of the platform. So we started on the overview tab, we went to the orders tab, now we're on the shipments tab, and we're looking at this Flex 277 shipment. And so this is the real-time aspect of visibility. Now I can see where the shipment is, whether there's been any delays and what reasons, and importantly, I can see all of the purchase order information that's connected to the shipment. And that's important if you wanna go in and figure out, hey, where did those 50 red chairs go, what shipment are they on, and where is that shipment? But another aspect of visibility that can be uh, just as critical, if not more so, is the ability to look at this data in aggregate, to look at it more on a po in a post hoc fashion, and to use that to optimize your supply chain. For that, we've integrated all of this order management data into the existing reporting functionality of this platform. So what I'm gonna show you is a report that I created within this insights reports tab. And so I'll go there now. So here's our reports tab and there's so many different ways that you can use this data. I'm gonna show you a very, very simple example that I, I just put together quickly. So here I'm calling this the purchase order CRD report. You can create these things, name them, customize them. And this is just a very simple example, like I said, where I'm comparing the cargo ready date in the order with the origin actual cargo ready date. And you can see that comparison here. So for example, on PO 850, I see that the, uh, the order cargo ready, ready date was January 17th, 2021, and the actual was February 21st, 2020. And so now you can answer questions like, hey, I'm hearing from my logistics team, we're having trouble with supplier X, Y, or Z. It seems like they're always shipping late. Well, is that actually true? Now you can go in, create a report, download it, uh, use it however you need to uh, 
to answer that question very easily and quickly. And then you're empowered to have those conversations. And while we're on the note about having conversations, I'd like to switch gears and talk about this second theme that, that Julie outlined, the second problem uh, that we heard from customers in this space, which is the need for better collaboration tools. There's a lot of different orders going out every week. There's a lot of different suppliers that customers work with. And hey, even if you're one of those customers that works with uh, a, a smaller group of suppliers, as we saw in the poll, there was, I think, around half of the participants here uh, had one to 10 suppliers. There can still be a lot of orders, a lot of dates to keep track of, a lot of complexity. And so we've created several different tools to help out with that. I think the first thing to talk about when talking about collaboration is messaging, right? We, we solve so many problems with unstructured communication, just talking to each other. And so we heard from customers that, yes, that is, that is true. They're using that. And for the most part, that's going well. One of the problems we heard, though, with that is that these messages can get lost, right? You have a, you have a lot of different threads, a lot of different communication about different orders. And so we wanted to enable this unstructured collaboration, but we wanted to also just put it in the context of the objects that customers and their suppliers are talking about. And so what we've done here, and again, I'm going to navigate back to that same order that we were looking at before, this PO1120, is we've integrated messaging into orders. So now you, every order has a messages tab, and you can go in here and message any participant in your uh, supply chain. You can, you can at mention them so that they get notified. You can create threads underneath the message to kind of thread uh, communication. And you can set up rich notification preferences for emails or in-app notifications. So there's a lot you can do with this messaging system, and now it's, it's associated with every order. One of the learnings, though, that we had with the pilot is that this alone was not really enough. It's one thing to have messages all collected on the order, but also that communication needs to be reflected on the booking and on the shipment in the later stages. And so based on that feedback, we added another feature here, which is this, this connection. And so if I go to that shipment, again, there was a shipment linked to this order, the Flex 277. And if I open that shipment back up, I go to the activity tab before we were looking at the purchase orders tab on the shipment. But if I go to the activity tab, this is where the messages on a shipment live. And you can see Frank is saying something here about a vessel delay. But also what you'll see is that, hey, there are messages, there were three messages on orders that are now linked to the shipment. And so it's easy to go and open that up and review, okay, there was conversation on the orders. I might want to know what that was, that I can connect the dots here. It might be relevant. And so we've, we've created that connection. And again, this kind of goes along the theme of we're trying to create one unified platform for global trade and all parts of that life cycle that Julie outlined. We don't want to have information siloed and hard to get out of. You've got to extract it out of one piece so that you can use it in another piece. The other two features are a little bit more structured that are related to collaboration. And these features we call date management and booking approvals. But very simply, what they are uh, geared to help with, and some of the problems that we heard most was, how do I make sure that my bookings are on time? I have all these orders and they have all these different cargo ready dates. How do I make sure that suppliers are booking, for example, 14 days before the cargo ready date, and I'm notified when that doesn't happen? And, and secondarily for booking approvals, how do I make sure that bookings are accurate? I've got these orders and they've got lots of different parameters for how the shipment should be created. I put in there the mode, the destination, number of units, inco terms, and so on and so forth. But how do I check that against the booking and make sure there's no discrepancies? So that's what I'm gonna uh, show you just briefly here. Starting with date management and helping to make sure that bookings are on time. Let me navigate back towards the dashboard here in the overview tab. So again, this is the, the dashboard for everything within Flexport. And within that, you see lots of different modules which can be customized like the industry news, different tasks. But the one related to date management is here. It says missed and upcoming orders. So very simply, this just shows you, hey, look, 
One order is missing the cargo ready date. One order has missed the must book by date. And one order is upcoming. And you can go and drill into that. Hey, I want to see what is this order that has missed the cargo ready date. Here it is, PO1057. And you can take action. But that's a little bit uh, that's helpful. That's more of a reactive approach. We also wanted to make sure that this tool was proactive. And so you don't necessarily need to go into the dashboard and find these things and go drill in. We're automatically notifying suppliers. We're automatically giving you a summary as the consignee of all the orders that are missed every single week and all the orders that are upcoming to help you organize this and to help structure that collaboration, making sure that things happen on time. The other aspect that's important is customizability. So going back to the dashboard, I said one order is missed the must book by date. Well, what is the must book by date? It depends for, for different clients. And so what we did was we made this customizable. You can specify and define how long before the order is CRD something should be booked. Most typically it's 14 days, but that's customizable. And you can also specify this thing. One order is upcoming. Well, what does upcoming mean? Well, it depends on what you care about. What do you want to see as upcoming? And what do you want your suppliers to see as well? Because they have their own version of the same view. So that's state management. And again, the idea is let's help people make sure that bookings are on time because that's challenging. The other piece is booking approvals. And I think this one is even more challenging without a technology solution. We looked, again, we pulled up that order 1120 and we saw all those different parameters. How do you cross check those against the booking? And there's tons of different parameters in a booking, like the mode and the destination, all of these things that the supplier is specifying. Very challenging to do without a technology solution. And so that's what we've created here. So you can see I'm on the dashboard again. I see, I see I have some tasks as well. And he, hey, here's one of them. Booking approval is required. And by the way, this is where all the tasks for Flexport go. We've just used this and incorporated order management inside of it. So if I open that up, I'll give you an idea of what booking approvals looks like, which I think is the best way to kind of quickly understand it. Um, you can see, hey, look, here's this booking. I can see uh, it's booked air, there's a cargo ready date. These are all the things that the supplier fills out, but I can also see that booking approval is required and I can also see why. Hey, there was an origin port mismatch between the order and the booking and the cargo ready date tolerance was exceeded. That means that the booking was made too far away from the CRD in your order. And now I can take action. I can either approve the booking or I can request the supplier to make changes. And again, on the theme of proactivity and not just reactivity, this information is the almost exactly the same information as what the supplier sees. So the supplier, as they're filling out this booking, would have seen this. And oftentimes, they can, they can actually just go correct. If it's just a mistake, they, oh, I didn't realize that. I'll just fix that. And then you would never see this in the first place. Sometimes, though, there's a very good reason for these things. And that this then prompts that conversation prompts that visibility, prompts the, the understanding and the uh, coming up with a path forward. And similar to date management too, uh, reactivity and proactivity was a theme we looked at, but also something that was important to customers, of course, is customizability. So what are the parameters that you actually care about? What are the, the tolerances that you actually care about? Because I don't want to see, and we heard this over and over again, I don't want to see every single booking. That's the problem with the solution that a lot of clients have today is I have to go and check everything. So how do we make it customizable so that doesn't need to happen? Well, for that, and this is, I'll dive into just booking approval, but I kind of explained a little bit about date management already. Um, you can go into the settings uh, for the Flexport platform and you can find this setting under purchase orders for booking approvals. And if I open that page up, you can see there's tons of different rules here that you can set for these are the things that I care about checking when I look at a booking. Uh, maybe I care that the mode matches. Maybe I care that the inco term matches. I can set tolerances plus or minus 10% on the units that I've ordered. And also I can, I can decide what the platform does when one of these things gets triggered. So you can see there's these columns up here, warning and book, booking approval required. Well, warning just lets the supplier know 
hey, this doesn't look quite right, but it doesn't give you an exception. Booking approval required triggers that workflow that I showed earlier where you would need to, you'd have a task to go check it out and decide whether you approve the booking or don't approve the booking. And so all those features together and much more are what make up our order management platform. And again, those, those two problem statements are the ones that really drove us uh, around that visibility and collaboration tools. And I hope that the overview here has given you a sense of, of our approach to solving those problems. Thanks, Drew. That's That was great. Um, and I, we're getting a lot of really, really awesome questions, questions that are pretty technical that, that show that people have experienced all of these pains, like a lot of the the, the things that you walk through around setting tolerances. Um, those are the types of questions that are coming in. So we'll make sure that we have a bit of time left at the end to, to try to answer some of those. Um, but just to kind of bring it all home, you know, I, I think it's important for us to just like like understand what what is the why so so why why again was was order management so important for flexport what can it do for your supply chain um let's see are we are we still on that demo slide or can we go there we go no, we, um, we can move it along there we go can we can we go to that ne the next one um you know what what does better visibility and collaboration enable i think that that's that's the question that many of you on here are probably asking yourselves so um you know i think that there are a couple of different things worth highlighting definitely better inventory planning um you know how do you make sure you don't stock out every single person listening to this call has uh, experienced going to order something online seeing that that there's a a you know a uh, that it's back ordered, that you might have to wait six weeks for that product. You know, the last thing you want to have to do is then go back to that client and say, you know what, it's no longer March 15th, it's April 15th. So being able to get ahead of those changes um, and, and just know what's What's in transit? What is that inventory that's on the water? Can we go ahead and start selling that and promising it to clients? Um, and that 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 ties to just mitigating these exceptions earlier. You know, we've all lived through the last year so much volatility. It feels like we've been in this constant bullwhip effect. Um, it's bad enough having to to live through that, but at least if you can then be agile and and be proactive versus reactive, like like Drew said, I think that puts everybody in here in a much better much better um, position. And then you know optimizing your supply chain with those data insights, just having that end to end view at your fingertips versus you know if you've got ninety five percent of you have most of your orders being managed in email, it's really hard to extract data from email unless you're just really diligent. You know, seeing tracking the number of times you might have changes on an order that's nearly impossible in an, in in an email world. And so being able to bring all of that into one system. I think is another another really nice advantage here. Um, so I, I wouldn't wouldn't be be me if I didn't do a little plug here. You know, if you uh, want to know what what to do next, you know, if you're already a Flexport client, I can see that there are a lot of Flexport clients on here. Um, please talk to your account management teams. They can they can work with you to get this set up very easily. Uh, and then for those of you that are new to Flexport, might be interested in working with us. There is a um, there is a worksheet in the bottom left corner that you can download that, that tells you how to learn more. So I think maybe we want to hand it over to Sana to start working through some of these questions. All right. Yes. And we get a lot of questions here. So it's um, um, we're trying to answer as many as possible. But uh, the first question is for for Drew. Um, and it's a question, you know, we worked with a lot of clients uh, to to shape this new uh, new order management. But how did we collaborate with 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 the suppliers uh, overseas uh, to see whether they like this new platform? What we learned there? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, it was you know, when I said that there was these clients as part of the pilot, I should have also clarified that there were also many suppliers, right? Because they brought all their suppliers into the pilot as well. Had those suppliers get onboarded, try out the platform and provide feedback. There were some things that we certainly learned from that. One is, I think we know that suppliers 
They work with many different clients. They have lots of different systems that they need to be aware of. And so something that's super important is making the flow of just getting their job done, getting bookings made, getting shipments out as easy and as intuitive as possible. And so we made several different changes to that flow to make it easy for suppliers to enter the booking, to pre-fill the booking form, to show them when we think mistakes are being made. And we're just gonna continue, uh, we're gonna continue that journey as well this year. Excellent, and I think uh, the important thing here is to say we are going to continue the journey as well. Uh, much more to come in the in the next twelve months on on, on this product. Um, um, for those who work with Flexport, um, the status quo is not what you get in the future, right? Um, so we keep on iterating, and we will be moving fast on it. Um, next question is around um, uh, integrations, and I think that's also you know. First for you, Drew, but probably also for Julie. Um, what are the, the ways we integrate with, 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 with systems? Yeah, great question. And of course, a very important question because none of the features that I, uh, that I showed you will work unless we can get the data easily into the Flexport platform. So we have several different integration options. We have a standard public API that anyone is welcome to build against when using order management. And then we also have several different kind of flexible flat file integration options. So EDI, CSV, uh, XML, et cetera, et cetera. And our, uh, our, our team can kind of work with a client to figure out what's gonna work best for them. And uh, one thing I would say is it can happen very quickly. Um, we have clients that uh, are building against our API that are up and running in just a matter of weeks and uh, flat file, not too different as well. Yeah, and just to for for the the larger clients that have spent millions of dollars on an ERP system, we can of course accept a you know an EDI eight hundred and fifty feed. So if you want to still be able to create those purchase orders in your system, but then have the, you know a, a mirror of that purchase order and the connectivity with with the supplier in Flexport, that's obviously possible as well. Excellent. Um, another question here, um, which is a little bit more technical, and I think you partly already addressed it, uh, Drew, but does the platform also allow for flagging or notifications for POs or portions of POs that miss dates early in the process? For instance, it hasn't shipped uh, from the supplier to the port. Yeah, that that is uh, what date management is all about. And there were those features that I showed you about how it appears in the platform when you have these date exceptions related to orders. But the important piece that you didn't see, it's a little bit hard to show in a demo, is all of those alerts and notifications that are associated with it. And so that's all kind of included as well. There is another uh, question here around uh, consolidation. What if orders are, are, are ready at the same time? Uh, do we allow for, for uh, you know, do we, do we um, help consolidating those orders in, into, into shipments? Yeah, that's a good Drew, question. I think you are the one there. Yeah, the platform certainly uh, supports uh, and, and understands that consolidations are gonna happen. One of the things that we had to build uh, in the pilot, which is another thing that we were kind of learning as we went along is you get all these orders on different shipments, but then things change, right? You have the five shipments with these orders that the suppliers linked, but then it needs to be turned into, into three shipments or one shipment. And so one of the features that we built to support this is the ability to very easily transfer that order, order data from one shipment to another to support consolidations. It wasn't something that we thought was, was needed because uh, there was a flow already to do that. It just wasn't as easy. But then once we built it, all of a sudden we saw everyone was using it. The Flexport operators were using it uh, and suppliers and, and consignees were using it too. So I think that was one of the wins from having this pilot program. We probably wouldn't have figured that out otherwise that that was important to customers. All right, another question about uh, connectivity to other freight forwarders. Um, um, will Flexport be able to have data connectivity with other freight forwarders? And I think this is a little bit of a question about now versus the future. Uh, Drew, please yeah, help us here. Yeah, for sure. So, well, yeah, happy to answer that. 
So one thing I would mention is you can store orders that you intend to use with with any freight forwarder within Flexport's order management platform. There's there's no issue there. Um, as far as directly connecting those orders to and kind of viewing other freight forwarder shipments, that's not something that the platform supports right now. The focus is uh, Flexport's shipments, but it is something that we are thinking very much about because we know that clients would like to use an order management platform that is the most flexible as possible. And it's something that, uh, you know, you all here will be the first to know when we have uh, more to share on that. It's something we're thinking a lot about in our roadmap for the next uh, year or so. Not an unimportant question. And, 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 and Julie, probably that's, that's one for you. Is the platform available right now? And how can we engage? Yes, it is available. So if you're, I mentioned before, if you're already a Flexport client, reach out to the account manager that you work with every day. They will know more. They can help get you set up. Um, the the origin teams that you're familiar with can work with your suppliers to get them online. If you are not a Flexport client, but you're interested to learn more, um, there is a, uh, a sheet that you can download in the bottom left side that has instructions on how to reach out to us. But we, you know, we'd be very happy to talk to you about what your needs are and how we could potentially serve them. Great. Another um, good technical question, and we have a few minutes left here, um, which is about the supplier view as well. Uh, can, what will suppliers see? Do they only see the information relevant to them? True. Yeah, so exactly. I think the, the question asker is kind of has preempted the answer, which is suppliers will see very, very similar views, but only the information uh, that is relevant to them. So if you have that orders tab that I showed and you, you could have many different suppliers in there and you as the consignee would see all of those. But at, when the supplier goes into that same orders tab, they will only see uh, the orders uh, that, that, were, that they were on. And it's similar with, with all of the other uh, surfaces that I showed. So for date management, again, that's filtered down to just them. Of course, booking approvals is just the bookings that they're handling. Uh, and even the, the reporting as well, because they can pull their own reports and look at uh, some of the data, but it's just the data that, that, you know, that they kind of are associated with. Another one here for you, Drew, um, and, and, and I see we have a lot of technical questions, and, and it also mm -hmm. indicates that, um, that our customers and, uh, are, are using other solutions that, that have some technical limitations, because uh, that's what it indicates here. Um, one question here is about how quickly uh, is the platform updated? Uh, in other words, is it real time? How does it work? Great question. I think there's multiple parts to that question, like how, how quickly does uh, the, the current features, how quickly do those update? And then how quickly are we updating features? Um, well, I'd say the current features are very close to real time. You know, messaging is is fairly instant. You message and and then you would see uh, that message and get notifications immediately. Um, and similar with uh, some of the data associated with a shipment, milestone data, all that, it kind of updates as fast as possible once we have the data. Of course, there's always some limitations in, hey, we haven't received this document yet, so we can't update the platform yet. But it's it's very, very fast as soon as we have that data. Um, the other part of the question, how fast are you making updates in general to the platform? And that is something that uh, I'm really excited to work at Flexport because of this aspect. There's dozens of of releases every week at Flexport where we are pushing uh, incremental changes and improving the product. And again, we see the the launch of order management as just the start of this order management journey for Flexport. We did a bunch of iteration during the pilot program, and we still have a lot more uh, that we want to do. Um, we're hearing feedback now, and, and, and launching the product has just accelerated that feedback. And so we want to keep up that very fast release cadence just to get more features out that are going to help uh, both consignees and the supplier side. Hey, one more uh, on the uh, on the approval flow. We've uh, we've talked about before uh, on, on on setting setting those rules um, uh, around, for instance, uh, date management, but also quantities. Um, is it also possible to assign specific people uh, to the approval flow? 
A very good question and one that we heard from customers because if you have a very large uh, purchasing team, you want to kind of slice and dice, hey, this is something, this is my, the purchase order that I care about, whereas uh, this other person cares about these other five purchase orders and I just want to see the stuff that's in my bucket. So right now, you can customize the notifications. So someone who, who wants to manage those flows can say, look, I want to get the notifications and someone who doesn't will not. But we can't do that individual kind of purchasing order assignment yet. That's something actually that we're, we're uh, researching and designing right now because we recognize that that's important. So um, that's something we hope to bring very soon. Great. One more here that is um, uh, dear to our hearts, this question. Um, is there, is there SKU level data available? And I think, you know, Flexport is all about a SKU level visibility. Uh, does that translate to our order management product? Yeah, great question. That's that's absolutely the case, right? So we now we get the orders into the system. Those orders have that SKU level line by line data. That data is then linked to bookings. And then when the shipment actually gets on the water or when we receive the commercial invoice document, the Flexport platform is able to take that data in, and then you have something very powerful because you, now you can see, this is what I ordered. You know, I know my order. I know those line items. This is what was actually booked. This is what the shipper linked to, to that book, booking, and this is what actually shipped. Let's take a look at the commercial invoice document, have that data in the platform, and be able to compare across all of those three so that you really get a picture of what's happening. You can really understand Hey, are things getting short shipped? Are they getting over shipped? You know what what what's going on here? And so that that is definitely a piece of this. That's one of the most important parts for sure. And, and Drew, almost all the questions for are for you. It's that's always the risk of having a, a technical person on it. That everyone <laughs> knows all the technical oh, details. Fine by me. Fine by me. This is <laughs> you gotta let the expert yeah. be. Um, but the next one is uh, it's 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 a great question as well, and that's about how you set all the the different parameters. Is it set by PO level? Is it set by supplier? Is it set by origin destination? What are the degrees of freedom that we've built here? Yeah, I love the question. I feel like so many of these questions are ones that internally we've we've had so many debates and conversations with customers about. So right now. The, the parameters that you set for date management and booking approvals, are, they, they are for everything. Um, and that's because, they, as, as in they apply to every order. And that's because when we were talking uh, to the group, of, uh, the group of customers that we were talking to, they felt like that was um, a pretty good start and would cover most of the use cases. There were some additional ideas around, hey, I'd love to be able to cut this by supplier. Because I actually, for this specific supplier, I want to have a stricter uh, set of checks for booking approvals, for example. I want to check everything. Whereas for these suppliers, we've got a, a, a more uh, deeper relationship, a longer relationship, and I don't want to have those uh, those checks. So that is something that, that, that we're very much thinking about and adding. The good news is, one, now that we have this framework for booking approvals, it's easy to add on these, these things. It's easy to add on additional rules, for example. If we hear customers are, are, are want an additional rule, um, then we can, we can add that more easily. And it's easy to add on different cuts of the data. So that's something that we're thinking about for the future. For now, it is um, kind of that more, more uh, global set of rules. Great. This is a, a simple a simple question, uh, but it's a, it's an important one because I see it surfacing uh, a couple of times. How easy can I edit my purchase order? Yeah, it's a good question. So for purchase orders, we rely on the um, the client's system as the source of truth, and the updates get pushed into our system. The reason why we did that is because. Uh, most of the clients we talk to, they already have a way in which they are managing their internal orders uh, because that's that's important for them to be able to operate their supply chain. And we didn't want the case where um, we would have changes in our system, but then that wouldn't be the same as what the client had. So we're always relying on uh, the customer to push down those changes to us via those integration methods that we talked about, API or flat file, EDI, XML, et cetera. And so that, that's the approach that we've taken. Um, 
it's as easy to edit your PO as it is to edit your PO today, I would say. And then if we have this integration in place, then it will be updated in the Flexport system. Excellent. Um, one that is um, um, uh, interesting as well, and I see it surfacing a couple of times, is around tracking uh, packing efficiency. In other words, container utilization uh, through order management. Is that something that we are uh, building in or we're thinking about? I know we in, in our in our in our analytics we have container utilization. How does that connect to order management? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good question. Right now, that's that's not something that's addressed. It's much more focused on getting the, the SKU level uh, line item data, order data into the shipment, but container utilization is something that's more uh, more on the operational level right now, not built into the product. If there's uh, if we see that there's a lot of demand for that, then that's something we would, we would definitely want to uh, look into more deeply. All right. Um, I'm, I'm going through all these questions because there's so many. Um, let me see, and and you're, please, Drew and Julie, pick up one if you see one that you really like because there's so many. Okay, cool. This is a great one, and 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 one that is uh, um, is, is 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 combining a couple of assets that that. Flex Flexport is offering. How will Flexport use the PO data to offer enhanced PO-based inventory and transit financing? Um, is that something you want to talk about, uh, Julie? Or do you want me to take that one? Sorry, I was reading through the questions because there's so many good ones. <laughs> Can you repeat the question and I'll be happy to take it? How will Flexport use PO data to offer enhanced PO-based inventory and transit financing? Yes, so you know, I, I think that that does connect to our our Flexport Capital offering, being able to have better visibility up front, um, and, and then that's something again. If you're working with Flexport already, you should definitely talk to your account management team about you know how to learn more about Flexport Capital. Uh, if you're not yet working with us, you know how to reach out. But but it, it does all connect, and it's all really important that that we have that upstream visibility. Hey, one other question right. I see here Go ahead. That, I, that I was just going to jump in on is, I see one that says, can Flexport's estimated arrival dates be exported to feed into the customer's ERP system method? Uh, and who can we work with? Uh, so that that's definitely true. And I think it, it brings up a really good point, which is uh, it should not just be about getting data into Flexport's system and making that easy, but also we got to make it easy to get the data out so that you can use it for however you want. And so for that, it's a similar thing to, to how I said about getting data in. We have a, an API uh, for shipment status. We have uh, flat file integrations that we can support as well. So a lot of different methods. Um, it's also pretty easy to export data out of the platform. So any one of those reports I could just download and open in Excel, for example, uh, for, for more of that kind of manual side. Um, and as far as uh, who at Flexport, I would say contact your uh, operations team and they should be able to point you in the right direction. Excellent. And we're at time here. And so I want to thank you, Drew and Julie, for um, um, showing us around in, in our new offering order management. There's still many questions left. Um, we'll try to answer as many as possible after the webinar. Um, what I'd like to um, uh, say as well is that if you want to review this webinar, um, a link of the recording will it be available directly after uh, this webinar ends. And it's basically the same link as you logged into this, uh, to this webinar. Um, thank you very much uh, for attending today. Um, it's always a pleasure to have you all uh, here. And um, you know, follow up with your account uh, manager. Uh, follow up with us uh, through the um, 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 with up to, uh, through our through our sales team if you're not a current customer, and, and we will be happy to uh, to show you a uh, you know a more in depth demo and uh, and tell you more about the benefits of uh, order management. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thanks everyone.